We're the grubs. Grubs, grubs, grubs. Kick them over. We'll hit the pubs. Grubs, grubs, grubs. And don't forget your subs. Hello and welcome to Sports Bet's Cricket Podcast, The Grub Show. A little bit of a new look panel this summer, but it's been a long time between drinks, so fill yourself up a cup of green cordial, rip open a pack of barbecue shapes and settle in for the next 30 or so minutes of absolute dross. Here to help me do it is The Grub's resident pie chucker, Rambo. Hey, mate. Fantastic to be here, mate. Good to see you. And uh, probably the highest net earning grub on Cameo, uh, Tommy <laughs> Flanagan as well. Good to see you, mate. Terrific to be here, fellas. Been missing East no- Gardens, but we're back now. Fair fun is... Not on. I think you're not Dave Beef fun, is it? Maybe uh, second or third innings on the show. Yeah, you've been here a couple of times before. Welcome back. Not not afraid of the cameras is our man Funners, is he, Hammy? No, he enjoys him. And uh, I tell you what, you produced a good nut the other day on TikTok as well. You want to just talk us through what you what you're doing with that one? Yeah, no, I was happy with that. A little bit of a backyard action out in the bush with me, uh, my old mate Tom, and I was happy to knock him over um, with a bit of express pace. Yeah, back through the gate, beautiful scene position as well, Funners. So a, a little, a little birdie also told me, Hammy, that our man Funners here is just looking to step up on uh, the Instagram game. Yep. And uh, I heard someone introduce Veneers potentially for Flanners. Veneers is the next stop on the uh, Instagram journey. Yeah, that's on the cards. Uh, my uh, my health cover. Uh, Requires me to get it done before the end of the year, so I've got to get that underway. So, yeah, that'll be uh, happening before probably. Uh, the, the, the question uh, that was put to the team was uh, to keep the gap or, or to, to take the gap away. I personally like the gap, matches the one between your bat and your pad. But uh, you got a little bit of time to, to make that decision. What do you think, Ham? Yeah, I say keep it. Uh, but interesting to know that you can uh, you can afford to get your teeth done, but you can't afford to pay subs. So, <laughs> um, anyway, good to have you on board. You'll notice a little bit of movement at the desk and also some mm. not matching of the graphics. Hammer away this week. He will be back and available hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but I noticed that you were very quick to jump in that seat over there, Rambo. Uh, you know, we, the body's not even, uh, you know, still warm. Well, I think I just found there was a little bit more coverage in this position. I don't know <laughs> if it was because the, the great man that used to sit in this spot uh, preferred it. Um, yeah. But I, I, it's been a long lockdown, Yeah, put it that way. Uh, <laughs> and uh, this table now, I think the graphics are even perfectly positioned there for those watching on KO and YouTube. Yep. Um, so yeah, pretty happy to seek some uh, protection there. Yep, absolutely. Now, I guess we've probably got to address that one first. big story yeah it's a big it's a big story and we're just going to get straight into it mm. um have you guys actually heard anything from skip uh in, in the last little bit no no direct contact yeah. uh i know there's a bit of information flowing around yep. um those who have uh, recently just dropped on the sports bet uh, instagram yep. page or our socials a statement yep was released by the club uh i think fun is you're going to take us through the statement mate and uh That pretty much outlines it all. Yeah, here's the official media statement. The board of the East Gardens Cricket Club wishes to announce that it's ended the relationship with the local cricket skipper effective immediately. Huge. The search is now well and truly underway for our next skipper as the board perceives a significant lack of leadership depth depth existing within the club. The appointment of the new skipper is highly likely to be external. We understand the appetite for information, but no further comment will be made by the club. Although we will say this. Skip's parting of ways with the organisation has left the club in one of the most dire unpaid sub situations in ECA history. For further inquiries, contact Carol at the club, but she probably won't pick up. Well, that's an explosive Huge. statement, isn't it? Um, Massive. It probably leaves more questions than answers for me, uh, but the, I mean, the moral of the story is he's, he's gone. So There's a bit to digest in there as well, particularly the one unnecessary part I felt in terms of the perceived lack of depth uh, within yeah. the current ranks. So I, I got a feeling that um, even if we were pencil in a big buyer has gone through any of our names in yep. particular, Hammy, yep. you know, probably the short odds favourite to step up if it was going to be internal, but it looks like that's been taken away from you already. Yeah, well, they say actions speak louder than words, and I think, yeah, you, you, you sitting in that chair speaks volumes. In stage, <laughs> Rambo. But the, Don't just, buy too much into that, folks. There's been some stuff floating around. Uh, there has. Know, WhatsApp groups been going to meltdown, Rambo. Well, you would know this more than most, Flanners. The, the WhatsApp chain and the WhatsApp rumour mill, you might want to call it, you get plenty of things on there, plenty of rumours, sometimes some tips. Most of them are poor. Yep. Um, but we we caught uh, wind of a few WhatsApp messages. These landed on my phone in particular. Here's one. Uh, hey, mate, keep this under your hat, but I'm hearing the skip over at East Garden was involved in some dodgy stuff. Apparently he got in too deep and he got kidnapped and they demanded a ransom from the club, but those idiots don't have the cash to pay it. I don't know whether – I think that's from one of our rival clubs there. They've, they've scrubbed out the names for uh, – 
for security sakes. So it's easy to see why you're in that group, mate. The uh, pie chuckers. So, <laughs> Here's uh, another one. I've got a mate who works in the East Garden, Ambos. Uh, apparently they were caught at a local cricket game where they attend a patient who went into cardiac arrest after pushing a quick two. He was rushed to hospital. Not sure the latest, but it doesn't look good. Last I heard, he was on a green cordial drip. Does sound a lot like the skip. Yep. Um, we're just not in a position to talk about it, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, we are chained almost to these chairs to not say anything. They yep. won't let us out if we give away what's actually happened. So, yeah. unfortunately, everyone's just going to have to uh, keep mum for a bit on the situation. Well, I, I, I wish I could tell you exactly what happened. I haven't actually heard from Skip directly, mm. but I think I actually saw him a little bit uh, over the course of the break. <laughs> he came out. Here he is at Lords at the home of cricket. Now, when we asked him to do this, when we actually toured with the Grubs, uh, he, he refused to do it. Um, but uh, here he is. He looked like uh, Mohamed Saraj, a little bit of a, a little bit of a Skip fan there. But he, he didn't just go once, um, he actually went again. <laughs> uh, now, I thought this could have genuinely been him because the pads were on the wrong way. That's how Skip used to wear them Unbelievable. Uh, when he was batting for us. But I, I Marched think, out to the middle with intent, so similar kind of strut about him. Absolutely. Probably not quite as pissed as Skip uh, <laughs> would be the only thing. But this one here, this is the one that gave it away. This was definitely him. And what gave it away for me was the bowling action. That's, uh, that's how on. Skip used to roll. So... So he has been spotted. He yep. looks like he's in good health. Yeah. I've heard since that performance the rumour that I heard England are using him as a net bowler for the upcoming well, Asher series. That would make sense, wouldn't it? I think uh, he's, he knows the conditions well. Maybe they're just trying to get a, a one-up on our boys. Yeah. Bit, locked uh, him in a room with Johnny Bairstow for the next three months, so good luck to him. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, look, I haven't heard directly from him, but it's been a bit of a theme. Uh, a lot of power brokers, a lot of big names in Australian cricket have been, instead of talking to their teams directly and maybe uh, fostering a healthy communication with them, they've just been going straight to LinkedIn. So I did notice right. that Skip has actually been to LinkedIn. Uh, that was his post there. <laughs> Man, a few words. He's just said, mate, they are rare. And you can see that he's open to work there. And Jesus engaged pretty well that post as well. So Not, as, not as quick tip as uh, one former Australian cricket coach. Yep. But uh, look, there will be a period of time where we uh, will be able to move on yep. from this. And um, look, all we can say now is to skip that. We miss you, mate, and we'll always love you. Yep. Um, you're a part of the family here forever. Yep. But we've got to move on, don't we? We do. New uh, chapter. Great segue. Uh, let's get into some fines. Fuck. Beautiful. Yeah, it's a, it's a new era for the Grubs show. We've got some new stings. Uh, Mervyn. Yeah, Mervyn. Very getting, nice. Getting the call up there. I might give myself the new rock here, uh, to, if you don't mind. For, for Please. The fines. Now, what I want to get into is October clickbait. Um, I think I've got a little mm. grab there for the people watching on KO. Uh, Ashes bolter alert. <laughs> Queensland is seven wicket all puts him in the frame for the squad in stunning shield spell. Now, seriously, what's going on with these these hot takes? Because I, I love Mark Steckity. I love a Ruffy. As I love a, a Brett Dory, a Clint Mackay, a, a Johnny Hayes. Any any of these kind of obscure yep. blokes. But throw them in there. If Mark Steckity plays an Ashes <laughs> test this summer, I will go to the venue and I'll do a full Jarvo, even if it means I go to jail like those Morris Jones blokes. I'll, that's as far as I'll go. Give it a wash. I know you've got a job to do. I know you've got clicks to get, but seriously, give me a spell. Did you click it? No. Oh, well, see, that's where you make a difference. Yeah. You can say all this and it's a fantastic fine on you. I'm totally on your, yep. in your camp. Thank you. But you can't do the click as well. That's yep. how, you know, you've got you to put your foot down. That's how you make a difference. The only good thing about it, lends itself to a bit of content for the show. So yeah. maybe. Of course, it. if we put any clickbait to uh, to get people to click on one of our videos, please, please. Content, please click on it. Yeah. We're measured please. on that. We beg you. Uh, Rambo, would you like to go? Yeah, fine for me. Uh, we're, just going for, we're just going 100 each week. This, is that, is yeah. that where we're at? Full yeah, clip. good. That's yep. a nice round number. Uh, full full whack for me. $100 go to the ECB. Yep. Um, now, look, I just want to preface this with we love our England viewers and listeners. Um, get around us. We love you. We went to, when we went to the UK, great lot, great cricket fans. Yep. But geez, your board just lather it on, don't they? They do. So you've got the biggest you know, test series there is, the Ashes. Yep, it's in Australia this year. Look, I understand if your players have families and considerations to take in. That's fine. Don't come. Don't play. Vera Colley went home to see his uh, pregnant wife. All good. But don't make a big song and dance yeah. about how hard it's going to be. Oh, dear, we're going to have to go into quarantine for two weeks, in which is effectively a resort yeah. in Noosa. Which a five-star resort. Which how, will probably be tough. where Jimmy Anderson ends up at the end of the series as well. Just retire down here, mate. Just make a long trip and just don't go home. Yeah. But, like, can we just... just Lather it down. We, they said they made a big deal about how they sat down at the table and they got the discussions. They, you know, we're okay now. We're going to come. Just... Put a pin in it. If you can't get yourself up to make a tour to Australia to play the Ashes, you're kidding yourself. Absolutely. You shouldn't even bother. Yeah. So they get good the full whack for me. That's a good use of the full whack. I'm, yep. I'm fully behind that one. Uh, Flanners, you, I think your theme is England as well here. 
Yeah, I'm going at the Barmy Army and more in particular the person who's running their Twitter account <laughs> attempting to uh, sledge Tim Payne with this niche statistic alluding to Joe Root's test batting average. Now, Tim Payne's our seventh uh, selected batsman. Joe Root's their first choice man. That's right. Um, and they've said if Joe Root scores 80 more runs than Tim Payne in the first two Ashes tests, his 2021 test runs will be higher than Tim Payne's career test runs. I'm not, not sure about uh, the, the niche stat there. Yeah. Looking at, uh, well, Nick Savage, at Nick Savage 1 uh, on Twitter has retorted with <laughs> test batting averages of the, the remainder of England's top order. Rory Burns, 32.3, less than Tim Payne's uh, 32.63. Ollie Pope, 32.16. Dom Sibley, 28. Uh, Darwin Milan, 28. Zach Crawley, not, 28. Not big numbers here, Dan Lawrence, 20, so All less than Tim Payne. Yep. And they're all going to be uh, starting choices in uh, the top order there for England. Uh, also, a couple of uh, responses on, on Facebook that I liked. If Steve Smith makes a duck in his next 25 innings, his batting average would still be higher than Joe Roots. That's a beauty. <laughs> that is a ripper. Yassir Shah has more centuries in Australia than Joe Roots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's my favourite one wow. a lot. So, uh, yeah, a good clip. Well, well delivered. Uh, he came here for Dross. That, that's leading the pack so far. And a hard data to back up the dross, which I love. I've probably <laughs> liked that on this show in the last few years, but well done. Good addition. There is a lot of preparation going over in this corner of the table, I must say, Hammy, just yeah, straight out of the gate. Setting the tone. There are about eight pages here. He <laughs> flicked it to me in a in an email and yep. said, do you mind if they print this out? Uh, I think Demi's still standing at the printer yeah. for the rest of it. So <laughs> Might have to compress when that When we take the first. break, she's going to bring in the rest of the Bible that you've come in prepared. <laughs> Um, but well played, Furnace. I love that. Well bit done. of data, bit of research, as Nathan Brown would say. Absolutely. Good research. Hashtag research. Let's get it trending. Uh, <laughs> now, we uh, one of the best segments on the show is, is Ask Grubby. He's back for another season as well. So we might get into a couple of these questions now. There we go. So Grubby's got his own sting as well. Big. You uh, have been a busy boy, yeah, haven't I have. you? I've been doing some prep on this <laughs> side of the table as well. Don't worry about that. <laughs> uh, now, the first one comes in. Um Will Hummer contribute anything this year from Ash underscore 9761? Now, great question, Ash. Uh, Hummer, as you will have noticed, is actually features quite prominently in the graphics to the show. Uh, he is going to be coming in off the long run. And I'll tell you what, he's probably had his, uh, his best season yet on the uh, the Richard Brownie Hummer show. He has, yes. So he's going to be a big, big feature in the show. Uh, he's got a couple of things to tend to for the next few weeks, but he's looking forward to being a big part of it. So the answer to the first uh, question for Grubby is yes. Hummer will be actually doing something this year and he will be featuring. I hope he hasn't, hope he hasn't peaked in his prep day. It's spring carnival time. Yep. He did some fantastic work on the AFL show. So let's just he hope did. that he's bringing his best thoughts for uh, the Grub Show as well. Well, he better because I've, I've briefed a few uh, singers for it. So, um, <laughs> so how many more can we get? Yeah, there's, there's heaps. There's heaps. <laughs> Uh, Flanders, I think you got the, the next one here. Yeah, the next question in Ask Grubby is, who do you think will be the game changer for both the Australians and the English in the upcoming Ashes series? Plenty of qu- high-quality players out there on the park. Yeah. A genuine, a genuine cricket question. Yeah. Um, I think for the Poms, uh, if he tours, Jarvo for me, probably the one who's going to bust it open. He probably looked the most threatening uh, for the Poms. I right. think he's switched to NFL now. There's a latest spotting Actually, of Jarvo. I did see that At the morning. Jacksonville versus uh, Dolphins game in London. Yeah. He's... A marvel. He's everywhere. Well, marvel. I just think versatile. You know, not a, not afraid of the big stage. I think That's he'd right. be an asset. Um, Get him to any for the Poms for the Aussies. I I, I don't know. I think um, batting is going to be the key to win this series, isn't it? Because uh, you know the bowlers, we know they're 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 pretty good, but England aren't going to be able to score any runs. So I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping that Smithy had a quiet uh, summer last time, but when he played the Poms, mm. he fills up when it matters. So absolutely. Yeah. Well, on on a, on a on that note, I think. The game changer could be Amazon or lack of Amazon. Because for the last series, uh, Australia were down here yep. and the Amazon series uh, was being taped inside the rooms. Yes. Didn't go quite well for Australia against India, did it? Yeah. Um, so they won't be in, I understand there's no series for the Ashes, or maybe there is, I'm you not sure. Know. But there cars. isn't one. Maybe there's lack of cameras, although I do love a bit of Mitch Mask kind of DJ in sheds. Yep. Um, won't be around. It worked for them in the Ashes when they went to England, but not at home. Yep. Uh, but in terms of a cricket game changer, I'm going to say Marnus because I think Steve Smith's going to fill his boots. Yep, but if Marnus can make any sort of runs, I think Australia's in, uh, got some good depth or got enough runs in the tank to be in a poor England batting team. And if he doesn't make runs, hog pile. Very simple equation <laughs> uh, for Marnus. Uh, Flanders, yourself? Uh, I'm going with Starkey. He, he probably uh, oh, yeah. w- wouldn't have been too happy with his um, summer at the end of his summer yep. uh, against the Indians last year. So I reckon he'll bounce back and have a massive one, take 40 wickets. Yep. Up a bit of white ball form, perhaps. And uh, no one for the Poms, and I'm, I'm right. With you. <laughs> so I think we'll stand up for them uh, either. Now, we might take a very, very quick. Oh, uh, one well, more question. Here we, we go. One more question. Where uh, are my manners? This is we, a great one. Who are we backing for? Who the are you backing for the Melbourne Cup? 
Uh, I, funnily enough, I had a, a, a dream, um, and don't worry, producers, you don't have to beep any of this. I had a dream that uh, Persan won the Melbourne Cup, came fourth last year. Yep. Uh, jumped on at 50 bucks. It's now 21 bucks funded, so I've already won. Uh, came third in the Caulfield Cup. Uh, there's a certain uh, horse going around at the moment uh, called Incentivise, which could be a bit of an issue, but yep. Persan would be my tip at, at 21 bucks. Yeah, I think a lot of people have written my pick off very elegant. Now, the, ah, it's kind of yes. ebbed and flowed, but I, I love this horse. I thought it might have been a, a big, bit of a sniff last year. Didn't get the job done. Mm. Been a little bit disappointed in this prep, but I think you're getting about 26 bucks there for very elegant, and nice. I think it is still a quality horse, still in the conversation. No Who question. With funners? I'm finding it hard to go past the favourite. I had him on Saturday, and I'll go for it again come the big one. Beautiful. Had much sleep since then, Flanners, or? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Business as usual for Flanners. Hey, uh, speaking of it, uh, getting a bit of sleep, Here's 30 seconds or so to do that. We're going to take a very quick break and then we'll be back with more Grub Show. I don't know, guys. The radar looks terrible. Maybe we should make it a 2020. Please say yes. I just want to go to the pub and watch the races. Die for it. Please don't give me out. Please don't give me out. Please don't give me out. Ha <laughs> ha! We don't mind that, boys! I should move my car, I think. Hey, boys! Update the scoreboard! Yeah, right, oh. Settle down. You scored three runs in five overs, you idiot. Yeah, Bobby, mate! Yeah, like that, Flanners. Got him on the ropes here, boys. What a waste of a Saturday. Saturday. All right, welcome back to the Grub Show. Uh, good to get a couple, bit of old gold there on, on the Beautiful. screen. Beautiful. Uh, in, yep. in the break there. Well done to Tom Linford for cutting down those little 30-second chunks. Uh, now, boys, we've, it's, it has been a long time between uh, drinks of lime cordial. We've missed a quite a, a bit of stuff since we were last on air, so I thought we might just take a bit of a trip down memory lane and maybe something that stood out to you since we were last on air in, in about mm. March of this year. Now, Flanders, would you like the new rock here? Yeah, I'll take it. And and for decades, we as Australians have been searching for the greatest all-rounder since Keith Miller, and we finally found one. <laughs> oh! Uh, the golden girl, Elise Perry, oh. uh, doing something that no other Australian all-rounder's ever done before, scoring 5,000 international runs and 300 international wickets, something that the likes of Shane Watson, Simon O'Donnell, Shane Lee, Ian Harvey, Tony Dottomade, Tom Moody, these types. Were what a list. Uh, so well played, Elise. <laughs> That's well, fantastic. Elise. Nah, we well Beautiful. That what was, a star. It was beautiful to watch. Now, Rambo, what did, what did you enjoy over the break? Plenty to choose from. Well, what I, I've definitely missed getting a haircut. Yeah. Um, that's been a bit of an issue for myself. Well, I, was um, say, I think Friday down here in Victoria, the, the bar. Yeah, I did notice that you might have had a little bit of black market uh, work done because you, you've did come it, did in it nice, myself. And, nice and trimmed. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and I mean, I, the hair's come in handy as well. We had a little bit of throwback to Hey Hey It's Saturday not too long ago. So, yes, of course, with the grubby cap. Um, yeah, Mr. Summers. Mr. Goodman, Mr. Goodman. <laughs> uh, so, no, I've missed you lot, if I'm honest. Yeah. Just uh, the banter, getting Always together, hard. you know, standing in the sun for eight hours, um, fine leg to fine leg, all that kind of gear, um, you know, script. Scrutinising the cordial mix from you, Flanners, just general dross. Uh, I've missed that a lot. Yeah, um, so it'll be good to get back on the field eventually, and that's for everyone around Australia. I think local cricket's kicking off pretty soon. Yeah, absolutely. Now that's that's a good call. Now what what I've missed or what I've been actually enjoyed since we've been back is. Uh, the I really enjoyed the IPL mm. and building that into my routine. Now, I've got to give a pat on the back uh, to our friends at KO. You have absolutely nailed this. For so long, it was too hard to keep up with the IPL. What you do now, you don't even bother watching it overnight. You wake up in the morning, you whack the KO Mini on, over your breakfast, 25 minutes, you know, cover to cover, and it's a it's a great way to cons- start your day to consume your breakfast and consume your IPL. Perfect. Uh, they've absolutely nailed that. So I've absolutely loved it. It's been it was a great tournament won by CSK against KKR in the big acronym battle in, in the final there. Um, <laughs> in the UAE. I, yeah, yeah, in the UAE. Um, bring it on. It was uh, it was a great tournament. A lot of people when they brought it into the Big Bash, really hate that. They find it confusing. The, mm. the finals, the way they do the finals where, you know, the, the top two teams play off the Qualifiers top one goes in. and, yeah. A little bit confusing, but it is fairer yep. because what you used to see is the team that finished top lose in week one and they're out. See so you later. Mm. I think they've done it well. Who finished top? CSK? Uh, it was Delhi. And, oh, right. Uh, there you go. And they got rolled in the final. They got straight oh, they, sets. There you go. Yeah. So Worked against them. Bring it on. I, I, geez, I love the IP. I love KO. I just want to make that really clear <laughs> in the first step. Um, now, what about something you're looking forward to doing, fellas? Oh, I can't wait to get on the train, go to the G and sink a few pints in the Percy Beams bar. It's been way too long since... Are you allowed back in there yet? <laughs> I hope so. That's been resolved? <laughs> yeah, It'll be devastating if I'm not, but... Surely um, after all those months of taking the photo down off the off the board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So day one, Boxing Day, that's the day I've been honing in on all year long. So if it's uh, if it's not a full house, one of us will get a guest pass for AJ, but if not, he'll have to wait till day three. Yep. I suspect you might have to wait if uh, we're not at full capacity. Yep. What am I looking forward to, Ham? Uh, I've got two here. One is pom bashing. One, one of 
the great things about when England tour Australia is everyone is getting stuck into the visiting yeah. comms. We're all obviously going for Australia, um, and there's some real sharp stuff out there. So if you see it during the series, please send it in. Yeah, love that gear. Get um, get into the poms. We're also- in a new battleground for the pom bashing this year as well. Probably uh-huh. going more to more cyber bullying probably than face to face interaction at the <laughs> yeah. ground. Uh, Bit of a lack of presence uh, in from the Barmy Army in particular. That's right. Yep. That's right. Then they're making their presence known on socials. Already. Yep. So they're adapting. So. Probably don't go the bullying, but there's a bit of cyber banter. That's it's a new about. game now, isn't it? It is. Uh, well, just just remember this. They gave it to the Australians uh, when we were there uh, in 2019. So it's time to give it back, Australia. Yep. Uh, and the other thing I'm, I'm looking forward to is Minnow's Cricket. Now, we're, yep. we're battlers at the best of time. Yeah. But isn't it just brilliant to see T20 World Cup? Uh, it's just kicked off. Off to a flyer last night. you got night. PNG versus Oman. The old uh, foes. <laughs> Namibia. We've got the Dutch in there. Scotland. Yeah. Scotland. Home of the brave. Rattled Bangladesh in the first game. Huge boil over. I'm, I suspect we're going to hear more from Flanners on that uh, in the next seg. Yeah. But uh, Minnow's cricket, all about it. I think the format is they play a little bit of round robin and then they get promoted to the to the big boys league. That's right. Yep. I've been loving that too. Uh, for the cricket nuffies, there's no better time than this probably four to five days before the <laughs> proper tournament. Um, and again, you can catch it all on KO. Um, <laughs> what I'm looking forward to? Yep. The return of live cricket. Now, you boys wouldn't know the feeling per se of walking into a venue where you've actually taken a cra- catch in the crowd. Mm. Uh, but I'm looking forward to waltzing back into Junction Owen. There is quite a bit of cricket scheduled there. This It's probably going to get changed a bit. But I know for the first time we're actually going to have a big bash game played at Junction Owen. That is going to be – if you, if you want to live out – what is everyone's uh, dream <laughs> of taking a catch in the crowd? There's going to be no better opportunity in your life than attending that game at the Junction Oval. If that, I think it's in the New Year, Flanners, or between Christmas and New Year yeah, there. Early January. Early Jan. Uh, Hopefully you can get it on the first go as well. Um, you know, well, just to really stand out amongst the rest of them. Yeah, only as good as your last one. So, uh, have they yeah. built the? Uh, is the construction finished down there at Junction Oval? I think it's still. The, I think it's still going. Um, I went down and I, to the spot that you took the catch, and there was a portaloo there. So I thought, oh, they've, they've just done <laughs> yeah. away with erecting a statue. Well, they just put it. Well, I, know, I noticed the construction shut down for a couple of weeks, and they weren't happy about it. People were on the on the west gate. They were going nuts about the holes <laughs> of the construction of my statue. So hopefully they were able to fix that. Um, Another quick segment here, uh, yep. I did something that's got my disc bulging um, over the break. Another, another stinger. Another, right there. <laughs> another, another stinger. Happy with that one? I've got a feeling that uh, our good friend over at 3 Wide No Cover, Pat Garshagan, has got his own couple of stingers, and you might just gone a bit green with envy there and just gone a little bit silly with the stingers. So Just get on board with the stingers, mate. Because, thanks for your um, patience, uh, viewers and listeners, as we just say... <laughs> Feed Hammy's ego on the stings. So what's got what's got my disc bulging? Now this can be anything. What it's basically something that I've I've seen out and about and, and I've noticed and mm. um, it's got me pretty excited. Now, there's a few honourable mentions here. Uh, Usman Kawaja rolling the arm over in the long sleeves in Very the nice. in the Sheffield Shield is, is certainly one of them. But one that I couldn't look past. This this is frightening stuff. He's frightening the best of it. Big Merv Hughes there. Oh. If you're watching on, I mean, look at this. Uh, he says, for crying out loud, can we please open up the barbershops and hairdressing salons? This is getting <laughs> out of hand. So. Uh, if, you, if you're only listening to the podcast, I'd really encourage you to go and look at the the, the, or the visual version of this because that is a frightening uh, photo. Um, I think we can all agree I've, I've long said Merv is probably the scariest individual I've ever met in my life, but yep. he's just got scarier somehow. Yeah, the big absolutely. Man. So, uh, he was on Racing.com the other day as well uh, with his pick seven. And, and he had a uh, trim? No, he hadn't had a trim. It was still out there. So he's um, at least someone's sticking to the rules, Hammy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it looks uh, well. Um, reminds me of the uh, of the Lorax a little bit there. Um, <laughs> speaking for the trees there, uh, Big Merv. That's what got my disc bulging this week. Now, uh, we have got the big T20 World Cup. Uh, that's, you know, it's already started with some of the minnows, of course. But yes. what I thought we would do here, as we do on the show, we'd like to give you hopefully a couple of winners or, or find some, some value for you in some of those markets. So let's have a quick shot at the stumps. Stingville. Here we That's, go. That, that might be one of the better stings. Direct hit. Yeah, direct, direct hit. <laughs> um, now, uh, we've got a few categories here. We do. We're, we're yep. going to go through top run scorer, top wicket taker, your tournament winner, and also your teams to make the finals. Right. So. And I reckon what we'll say, we'll, we'll give uh, Uninitiated here in um, Flan, give us a, a bet and give us a roughie. Yeah. Um, so I think I'll kick off, uh, shall I? Yeah. Top run scorer. 
Um, I like Baba Azam from Pakistan. Absolute class bat. I think he's the captain now as well. Yep. 15 bucks. But Mitch Marsh is my roughie at $34. Much maligned. But he's smashing them at number four. Uh, even might even go up to number three. And they might even sink Smith back into the middle order. Yep. He's averaging 37 in his last 10 innings in Arrow in West Indies in Bangladesh. So similar conditions. Oh, I love Mars. that selection. Jeezy looked good. Like not many players look good in West Indies and Bangladesh. But yep. um, Marshy, whacking him and get him up there in the top three. I love it. Um, might get on to that. Jump it while it's still at that number. Number. Uh, top wicket take, I've got Jasper Bumra at $9. Why wouldn't you? And the number one T20 bowl in the world, uh, Tabrez Shamsi from South Africa. Yep. $34 again. The frog in value bl- if you're on a Roffy. Fro- frog in a blender sort of setup, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. Very, very hard and difficult. And we all know what those wickets can do in the UAE, UAE flanners. Uh, yep. They turn sideways on occasion. They do. For a winner, India is my tip. Again, as mentioned, those conditions. But West Indies is a Roffy. Love getting up for the big T20 tournaments. They've they won it twice already. Yep. And the finalists for me will be India versus Pakistan. You get 11 bucks for that. Don't mind that. Okay, you, you've uh, you've done your research. So you're going with the favourite there, I noticed, with Jasper Boomer as well. Yeah, I found ball. that one a bit hard. Uh, I, 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 I'm going to go for Shamsy, though. I think the value is good. Yep. And, um, you know, apologies in advance. Again, yeah, responsibly. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> uh, Flanners, do you want to take us through your selections? Yeah, but just a disclaimer first before I go through my selections. I made these prior to Bangladesh's mm. loss uh, last night against Scotland and Bangladesh. So you're off to a bad look. start already, Flanners, yeah. because the thing you want to do here is say it with... <laughs> With authority, because when we no. cut this down later and make you look like an idiot, it just works better for the show. Sweating neutral bullets down there. <laughs> I, the I do believe, though, that this, this that loss will galvanise Bangladesh. They've got the best <laughs> all-rounder in the world, Shakib, and, uh, yeah, they'll be they'll the, be right. The wake-up call they needed, Flanners. Uh, so I've gone with Steve Smith um, for, for the top run scorer, yep. uh, best batsman in the world, and uh, Mushfika Rahim, uh, Bangladeshi, former captain, 34-year-old experienced campaigner in the T20 format. So I nice Ruffy. Be- believe he's uh, he's going to go all right. You're not a bit worried about the lack of cricket Smith hasn't played in the IPL, got dropped from the... The Delhi Capitals there didn't didn't bother you too much. Uh, he's class in all conditions against all opposition. So I'll back Smithy. Okay. Uh, How's the in, elbow? In the, in the world's biggest T20 tournament, he'll, he'll lift to the level. How's what? the elbow? Is that fully recovered? I think the elbow was dodgy. I think the elbow was fine. Yeah, I think, I think we might have put right. a line through Steve Smith there. Yep. Keep going, fast. Uh, with, with a similar theme of <laughs> Australia and Bangladesh, I've gone with Pat Cummins to be the top uh, leading wicket taker. Yep. Best bowler in the world, um, all round bowler. Um, and I think in in uh, the conditions over there in the UAE, he'll be able to I- exploit them. We said it's a spin friendly wicket, but it's also going to be a Pat. Cummins friendly wickets. They all are, aren't they? Um, and Mustafa Zul Rahman, uh, Bangladeshi well, quick, uh, dominated Australia in the in the recent series over in Bangladesh, and I mm. think um, he'll, he took a couple last night. Um, and Love I, the fizz. I think, uh, it, as I said last night, the Tigers lost, but I'm sure that they'll uh, work their way back into some some form and bounce <laughs> back. Uh, and the winner, um, I'm going for Australia. And uh, would you believe it, Bangladesh, uh, my roughly um, <laughs> real Australia-Bangladesh right. theme uh, going on here. You'll probably but get a bigger price now. I think you're getting Bangladesh about $41 there maybe looking this morning. Yeah, yep. Check your local guys. I may have even blown out further after last night's loss <laughs> to Scotland. Yep. Um, and uh, name the finalist, uh, India and Australia. Hard to go past India who've been uh, a powerhouse in T20 cricket mm. for a long period of time and, and Australia uh, as I said they've got Steve Cummins a bit uh, sorry Steve Cummins Steve Smith the <laughs> best batsman in the world and Pat Cummins the best bowler in the world maybe so. one day they will do a <laughs> bit of a clone version yeah. where you get Steve Smith's best stuff and Cummins best stuff and you know yep, see, what, see how you can dream up there absolutely just certify the future market is dream that one uh, very good alright so over to me now now I think uh, in your top run score market, KL Rahul at $13 mm. here. That is a great price. Ripper. This, so let's have a look at his last four IPLs. Third top run scorer, second top run scorer, top. And then he was third this year, and he only got passed in the final by two bats from playing the final. Uh, so he's playing two less games there. He's still smashing heaps of runs. He's dominated these conditions for a long time. 13 bucks, great price for him. Um, the good thing about him as well is he opens a batting. So even when they're chasing small yep. totals against minnows, he's going to get a hit. So he's yep. going to keep accruing runs. I just ruined one of my uh, Rambo quiz questions there, but that's all right. Carry on. Okay. Uh, now, the other one is... <laughs> I'll do it live. Yeah. The other, for my roughie, Glenn Maxwell, uh, 36 yes. bucks thereabouts. Now, his job in the in the IPL was to come out and smash the spinners. There's going to be so much spin in this tournament. He's going to have a good chance to do it again. 650s since the resumption, plus a couple of 40s. Um, I think he's the best bet of any Aussie batter. Although, as I said... Yeah, I didn't take, what, take them both yeah. at 34 bucks. Why not? Responsibly. Top wicket taker. Now, look, I have, I've edged my bets a little bit here. There's, there's a few selections. <laughs> I've got so the field. I'm just taking the field in, the in field. both of these segments. Yep. I'll, t- I'll talk you through. So, Mitchell Stark, I think um, what you generally see in these tournaments, if it, especially if he turns up, uh, new ball versus minnow teams. 
generally equals success. Um, ah, yep. So there's going to be a couple of those. They also play England in the group stage. They don't play left armers very well. So 15 bucks, yeah, he's, he's, he's best back, but for a reason. Then I think there's going to be a big place for spin. So Rashid Card's the shortest there at 13 bucks, but there's some good roughies on value. Yep. Uh, Adil Rashid, $26 uh, from England. They're going to go deep into the tournament. And then the one I like for a Stewie Diver at a massive price from the West Indies, Hayden Walsh Jr. at 101 bucks. Now, he was the leading wicket taker against Australia earlier this year. He took about mm. 16 or something. Uh, hasn't fared so well since then, but in similar low conditions like, you know, big big dust bowl. He's got it in him. He's got it in He's him. He's flying under the radar big big time with that price. Tournament winner, India. They've You know, the IPL is the strongest comp in the world. Uh, they've got all these players who have played so well in it. Um, then I, I reckon... Pakistan might be smoky. With, yep. with Matty, Matty Hayden at the helm as the coach. If you want a real smoky, Sri Lanka have won one before. I think they're about 67 bucks, but mm. they don't, I don't reckon. They're, gonna, they're in the qualifying as well, Yeah, Sri Lanka. Absolutely. Uh, for my Quinella, um, India versus England in the final. I think they're the two best teams. Uh, I reckon England could beat them with Stokes and Archer. Those two won't be playing, so I think that's going to yep. be the difference in it. But, geez, they're a very good team. they got some guys who can absolutely whack them. So those those, those guys are going to be going pretty close. And time, time zone-wise, it's it's not as friendly as it would be, obviously, if it was it was here, but better than, say, in England. Yep. You're getting a few 9 p.m.ers, yep. a few 1 a.m.ers if you can be bothered. Yep. Um, and where would one watch that, Hammy? KO. I right believe here so, yep. on the home <laughs> Of cricket, they've, you've seen the ads. They've kicked the footy codes out of the share house. They've had their time. The cricketers are here now, and you can watch it all here on K. And we'll be we'll be checking in with these uh, previews or these predictions yep. as we go through. Uh, yep. Expect to show every week this summer. Yes. Is what I've been told. Yeah, High gonna, expectations. Yeah, we're going to be a little bit more consistent, hopefully, with the, with the show over the, the course of the summer. <laughs> uh, and a staple of that show, which has been a, a smash hit over the journey, is uh, Rambo's Quiz. Look at, I got one. You made me one. Yeah. How about that? Congrats. Hey, congrats on the, the Botox filler there on the lips. Too. There was, uh, <laughs> it looked quite interesting, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, I don't want to give away all my secrets. I'm actually, uh, I'm actually 55. Yeah, there so I've held up pretty well. Don't don't knock it till you've tried it. Honey. Yeah, beautiful. And that, geez, that's an old photo of you in the bottom left there <laughs> as well. Some uh, better days. All right, Rambo's quiz. Now, um, I've just realised in my new position that you could probably see my sheet here. So if you okay. boys can be so kind as to not cheat, um, which I know is going to come difficult to you, we can kick off Rambo's quiz. Question number one, uh, The t- speaking of minnows, the T10 European Championship was held in Spain recently and England 11 beat which country in the final? A, Germany, B, Spain, C, Netherlands or D, Belgium? C, Netherlands. Flanders, would you like to answer? A, and Germany. That's wrong. A. Germany. Incorrect. D, Belgium. 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 Now, I, I was going to have a rant about, this almost got a fine. England sent an 11 over, which are full of county players. And it's just, I mean, it just doesn't feel in the spirit. Obviously, they won by nine wickets in the final. They beat Belgium. But good effort by the, the Belgians. Shout out to Antwerp Cricket Club. No dramas finding an 11 to go to Spain, but country Australia, <laughs> they don't want to do it. Interesting. Okay. Question number two. Who scored the quickest 50 in this season's IPL? Was it A, Ishnan Kishnan, B, Shimron Hetmeyer, C, Kieran Pollard, D, Glenn Maxwell. D, Glenn Maxwell. Flanners. Hetmeyer. Incorrect. It was Ishnan, <laughs> Ishan Kishan, who I think is in the India team, and he's a bit of a he's the new little master. Yeah, I hear. So uh, watch out for him. Flying all to play for here in Rambo's quiz. <laughs> so we're Duck on uh, zero for Hammy and zero for Flanners. Looking a bit Breaking like a great scorecard here. <laughs> Yeah. Question number three, something, please. Australia's women's team now holds the international record for how many ODI wins in a row? A, 14, B, 18, C, 22, D, 26. C, 26. 22. It is 22. Four oh. points to Flanners. For an extra point, Flanners, which country was number one in the, in the 22, in the sequence? The first. Uh, I'm going with New Zealand. Close. It was India. Ah. But we're one nil Flanners. All right, here we go. Last question. Your only chance here, uh, Hammy, to draw a level. Mintra is the shirt sponsor for the IPL champion CSK. What do they do? <laughs> a, commercial space travel. B, online clothing. C, construction. Or D, office slash home delivered food. Flanners is in first. Construction. I was going to say Incorrect. that's two, Ooh. but good thing I didn't. Uh, office slash home food. 
That'd be incorrect as well. It's online clothing. I think that's the effectively the uh, iconic of India. Does what it says um, on the tin. So Are there you, you go, Rambo's quiz. Uh, and a, a normal, typical high-scoring affair, Funners wins 1-0. Yeah. Great way to kick off the season, couple, isn't it? A couple of draws there and, uh, <laughs> and the one win. So, well done. Yeah, oh, beautiful. Well, i tell you what, aside from Rambo's quiz, pretty good first episode back. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, thank you very much, uh, Flanners, for, for joining us. We, we may see you again next week. If not, we'll see you plenty of times through the season, I'm sure. Absolute pleasure. Great to be back here at East Gardens and uh, on the Grubs podcast. It's unreal. Beautiful, beautiful. Rambo. Consummate professional. Uh, as ever, mate. Uh, very, very strong. Thank you, Hammy. Great job uh, letting letting us through the way. Thank and uh, those thingies, again, just massive shout-out. We should give the background a shout-out on the stingies. Yeah, we should. Well, Fantastic well work, back, back yeah. there. And, uh, yeah, we saved the best one for last, month. I thought, <laughs> I thought you'd appreciate that one. Uh, thank you very much for watching. The most pressing issue, if you know uh, someone who might be a good skipper of the grubs, please do let us know. Tag him in the post. There's going to be a few things potentially on some job websites in the next few weeks as well. Uh, keep your eye out for those ones. Uh, grub up and get responsibly. Yeah, we're the grubs. Grubs, grubs, grubs. Kick them over, we'll hit the pubs. Grubs, grubs, grubs. And don't forget your subs.